Hi, this is Professor Matt W. And right here I have my watch winder. I have a couple different watches and I can put them on different times and I can synchronize them. I can make them turn off and go. But right now I'm not going to talk about time, although this does have to do with time um, because it's a fundamental property of particle spin states is time. But what I'm going to help explain is the geometry of the one-half spin state of our fermions, of electrons and quarks and, and other things like that, um, and what that means. All that and more in a second. So right here I have a, four different watches, and they're all going in, uh, di some of them are going in different orientations, but they're all following a 360 degree um, change in direction, a full turn or pi turn, as we like to say in radians. What happens is, what we'll see is, as we turn, and if we have this watch, as we turn from the top, as long as it stays the same, that two, that stayed at the top, will be back at the top at the end. Now, that's how we usually think of turning. And if we put a point on a circle, we expect it to be in on that point when we turn it a full 360 degrees. However, the electron and several other particles do not behave this way. It actually takes two turns to achieve um, the same orientation. One turn will only get the inverse wave function. That means that if the, if the electron were a wave, it would be the inverse wave at 360 degrees, and it wouldn't be the f full electron until when it was back at another 360 degrees, making one turn 720 degrees. Now, I'm going to try to explain how that works with another watch from a different video, an older watch, and I think um, the older watch actually helps us because it might show some significance of why this is so important. I'll listen more in a second. So I have this old antique watch, Hebrew watch, from the turn of the century, and something interesting is going to happen. So I want the minute hand and the second hand synced up. Uh, they're synced up right now. So how an electron spin will work is as when we get to 30 seconds on the second hand, I will have accomplished 60 minutes on my minute hand. This is how the electron works. So I'm very slowly, I'm controlling the minute hand, the second hand is going on its own. So forgive me. Okay. So this is where it would be at 360 degrees. The electron will have spun and it will be at its inverse wave function. So if I go another 360 degrees, that is 60, 60 minutes, I will bring the electron back to its proper orientation. So one, three, four, one, and now the electron is back. So it took 720 degrees for the electron to actually be back to its proper orientation. And that is the best illustration, is this clock illustration comparing the minute hand to the second hand of the geometry of half spin states. And we call these things spinners. In, in American English, we're spiners, and the British would like to say spiner. But the overall idea is that electrons, all fermions that have a half spin, are going to take 720 degrees to get back into the proper position. So when I was getting back into the to the star, to the Hebrew, to the star of David, when I was trying to get back to the star of David, it took 720 degrees on my second hand. It took only 360 degrees, obviously, on my minute hand. So comparing the second hand to the minute hand is the best real conceptual way to really think about the geometry of electrons and fermion spins. Okay? Um, we're going to be talking more about this because this also, uh, the electron also has different types of spin states, and then we also have the positron, which is actually an electron that is actually going back in time. So. Like I said before, 
time has a lot to do with this. We're actually going to observe particles that go back in time. I know we say that's not possible, but we actually see it every day, and we have particles that go back in time, so we know that's possible. And an example is the positron. So a clock, I think, or a watch is an apt um, analogy because we're going to start looking at particles that go back in time. So stay curious, my friends, and this is that antique Hebrew watch from the turn of the century I used in a previous video. So this goes to Fermi and also Einstein, the boson is named after Einstein, the, boron, the Einstein particle and the fermion, the first of the fermion um, Dorad particles. So there's a reason for that. Einstein and Fermi and all of them obviously being Jews. So I'll stay curious, my friends.